Good morning, everyone. It's 9 o'clock. Today is Tuesday, October 1st, 2024. We're here in council chambers for the hearing examiner agenda and hearings today. I'm calling the hearings to order. Before we start the hearings, I have a few preliminary comments. Um, I want to introduce our process to those of you that may not be familiar with it. In our process, which is a little bit different from that in other jurisdictions, the clerk will read the introduction to the case. The clerk will then swear in anyone who is testifying. City staff will testify regarding compliance with public notice. If public notice is found to have been properly accomplished, we go forward with the hearing. If it is not, then we take another route that will be, that will be discussed at that time. Assuming public notice is found, the applicant goes first and presents an entire case. The city staff goes second and also presents an entire case. Public comment is next. If you're here for public comment, please make sure that your comments are comprehensive because once public comment is closed, it will not be reopened. Following the closure of public comment, the applicant will respond to questions, make any final comments. Staff will do the same and the hearing is concluded. If you have a cell phone with you today, please turn it off or silence it if you can. And if you can, take any cell phone conversations outside the room. If you, have to, if you wish to have private conversations, please move away from the lectern so that we do not accidentally record your conversation. Once recorded, your conversation becomes public record. If you have comments or testimony, please come to the microphone so we can properly record your testimony. No testimony will be accepted from anyone's seat. Anyone who provides testimony other than the applicant and staff is requested to fill out a public participation card so we can properly spell your name. If you wish a copy of the recommendation or order, as the case may be, please provide your email contact information. However, once provided, please be aware of the fact that your email contact information then becomes part of the public record. With those preliminary comments, I'm going to turn it over to our clerk to call the first case. Thank you. Case number DEV24-000003, address 2294 Southeast 28th Street, applicant Sherry Gaston. The owner is requesting a 10-foot deviation from the Marine Improvement, Improvement Standard of 40 feet established in the Land Development Code to allow a boat canopy with a maximum length of 50 feet. The location is lots 46 and 47, block 1128, unit 19, Cape Coral subdivision. The address is 2294 Southeast 28th Street. Any persons giving testimony today, if you are able, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Good morning, Ms. Ford. Good morning, Madam Hearing Examiner. For the record, Candace Ford, Planner with the City Planning Division. I am here to confirm that we did properly advertise. We did post one sign on site. We did mail out notification letters to all residents within 500 feet, and then we did place an ad in the news press. Thank you. I will find the proper notice was given. Thank you. Can we have the applicant up, please? Could you please state your name for the record? Thank you. And my name is Daniel Lynch. I'm with Waterway Boat Lift Covers. And this is Sherry Gaston, and she is also with Waterway Boat Lift Covers. Okay, I believe that Ms. Gaston was the applicant? Yes. Yes. All right, um, you can proceed. Thank you. We're applying for a deviation for Mr. Gallo. So, sir, you'll need to speak into the mic. I Thank apologize. You. That's, you can actually turn the mic if you like, if that's more convenient. Okay. We're applying for a 50-foot canopy for Mr. Gallo. Mr. Gallo has a 47-foot-6 boat. It's just enough to cover it. We're not overextending over the boat. The style that Mr. Gallo is wanting is the radius veranda. It provides an overhang over the side of the boat. We've kept the boat at a minimum to what is necessary to cover his boat, exceeding the 40-foot. Um, that is a picture of the canopy we're proposing to install for Mr. Gallo. Development code 5.47 allows for the deviation process for customers who have a larger boat than normal to go past the process. Um, the canopy as it stands will be 14 foot tall. Um, the length would be 50 and the width would be 16 foot. This is a 
this is his boat. He has a Nortec 450. Um, the actual boat itself is 45 foot long. Then with the motors, that's what brings it to its 47 and a half feet. Customers asking to exceed the 40 foot length because of the size of the boat to protect the interior and to protect the quality of the boat. In conclusion, we're asking for this 10 foot extension for this deviation so that Mr. Gallo can properly cover his boat and protect it from Florida's environments. Um, that is all. Okay, a couple of questions. Um, have you had an opportunity to look at the email that was sent in from Kurt and Melissa Godwin? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you don't have to respond to it, but if you choose to, this is an, a good time to do it. I apologize. That's okay. Take your time. So we did receive an email from Ms. Uh, Muck, who was going ahead, and uh, she filed that she wasn't for it. Um, it seems to be the consensus is that the two individuals are worried that this process would create just 50 foot canopies. The deviation process, you can't have a 30 foot boat with a 50 foot canopy. The canopy can only extend so far as to cover the actual boat that's needed. Um, as far as impacting the, um, the views, the riparian rights extend out from the, from the pin from the seawall. So, they're looking, everything met with setbacks. We got the setback waiver from DEP. Um, everything has been set back appropriately. As far as it maintaining the view, a uh, person who owns a property has a right to have that view extending out from their view. Um, the other stipulation was they were saying that uh, Mr. M is a snowbird. He's only down here four years. That, that shouldn't have any relevance to this case. And I believe that it addresses them all. Um, Ms. Muck also claimed that we set up this hearing at a time when snowbirds weren't back home. We have no control over that. That's, that wasn't our intent on it. Thank you. I, I do, I'm sorry, was there something else? No, ma'am. Okay, um, and I, I did have another question. Um, Land Development Code has specific requirements for deviations and, uh, and what some people do if they uh, don't feel like they can address all the individual pieces of the deviation requirements, uh, they take the staff report and they make it part of their presentation if they agree with the staff report. So um, have you had an opportunity to review the staff report? Yes. Uh, do you wish to incorporate that into your presentation today? Yes. And have you had an opportunity to review the recommendations and the conditions for the deviation? Yes. And are those uh, acceptable to your client and you? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you have any other comments based upon my questions? No, ma'am. All right. I will be calling you back up um, yes. in a little while, but thank you very much. Thank you. All right. If we can have staff up, thank you. Good morning, Madam Hearing Examiner. Once again, Candace Ford, the City Planning Division. Um, okay, the applicant slash property owner is going to be MG Holdings LLC. The authorized representative we just heard from, which would be Sherry Gaston with Waterway Boat Lift Covers. The location of the project is going to be 2294 Southeast 8th Street. The applicant is currently requesting a 10 foot deviation from the Marine Improvement Standard established in section 5.4.7.B.4 of the Land Development Code to allow a boat canopy with a maximum length of 50 feet. The property is outlined in red on the screen, um, and then the red dash line is gonna be all residents within the 500 foot requirement for mailing. And this is a snippet from the proposed marine improvement plan showing that the boat length is going to be that 50 feet, and then it's not gonna have a max, it's gonna have a 30 inch max overhang on the sides to prevent view from being obstructed from either neighbor. A little bit of background about the site. It's currently 16,159.62 excuse me, square feet. Um, it is currently improved with a single family home that does include a seawall dock and a boat lift currently. The owner has recently received a marine improvement permit to build a 970 square foot dock replacement with a new boat lift. Um, 
<clears throat> excuse me, the site is along the Caloosahatchee River, which is, and it's about 1,100 feet west of where the Mackenzie Canal enters the river. The Caloosahatchee River has a measured width of about 8,300 feet at the site location. And the single family house was constructed in roughly 1983. A dock was originally constructed in 1989 and was replaced in 2004 after a hurricane. Some criteria uh, listed in the Land Development Code, Section 5.4.11.a.2.b, uh, requires that factors shall be considered, including the design, size, and location of the proposed boat canopy, the effect on the waterway in which the canopy is located, and the effect of the canopy on the use and enjoyment of the surrounding properties. Staff analysis concludes that the proposed canopy will not extend more than 19 feet into the Caloosahatchee River, which is less than the 1% of the width of the water body. Um, the requested increase in the both width and length will not pose a navigational hazard for boaters using the river. The location of the canopy will still provide a 12-foot setback from the north and a 27-foot setback from the south, providing the adjacent property owners with adequate access to their improvements on their respective properties. Um, the canopy will not obscure visibility of the river of their surrounding property owners. Um, LDC currently does have a stipulation that prevents boat canopies from extending more than 30 inches from any boat or I'm sorry, dock or seawall to which the canopy is attached, the restriction will prevent the canopy from imposing navigational or visual impairments for the neighbors. Um, and the proposed 50 foot length of the canopy appears reasonable to protect a boat that has a length of 47.6 feet. The 50 foot canopy length will allow a modest amount of canopy, which is about 1.2 foot to extend beyond the bow of the, the bow and the stern of the boat when it's moored. As for the comprehensive plan, um, the deviation request does not involve a request to develop a fuel or repair facility on the residential site, which is policy 1.3.5 of the comprehensive plan. And then policy 1.15 table one identifies that um, R1 zoning is compatible with the single family future land use classification. Planning staff does recommend approval with conditions of the deviation and um, prior to HEX, staff did receive two emails yet late yesterday afternoon in opposition of the proposed canopy cover. For the conditions of approval, staff is recommending that the deviation approves the boat canopy with a length not to exceed 50 feet at 2294 Southeast 28th Street to cover an existing marine improvement that is depicted in Exhibit A. Standard two is the boat canopy shall not extend horizontally more than 30 inches over any dock or seawall to which the canopy is attached. And three is the petitioner shall pay to the city of Cape Coral the cost of recording the deviation with the office of the Lee County Clerk of Court. And four is the city shall record the deviation with the office of the Lee County Clerk of Court following the receipt of the recording fees from the petitioner. And I'll stand by for any questions. Okay. Do you wish to incorporate your staff report into your presentation? Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, thank you. Do, uh, you. You're not required to testify regarding the emails that were received, but if you choose to, this would be your opportunity to do so. Did you have any comment on those? Sure, I'd like to just uh, note that I think both of the property owners that did email in were more concerned about the visibility impairment um, for this. The canopy is not gonna overhang more than 30 inches, so it's not gonna hang down too far. It shouldn't impair uh, visibility more than any other standard because we have that for any canopy that goes up 30 inch standard the length is modest to accommodate the boat size that's going on site as well and the reason this is here is that the, is that they're requesting a 10 foot deviation if it were 9 foot 11 inches it would be subject to administrative review not hearing examiner correct correct yes okay thank you I have no other questions right. this is a public hearing are there members of the public who wish to provide input or testimony Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the applicant. Could you folks step up to the mic, please? Thank you. You've heard the testimony of uh, staff. Do you wish to incorporate that testimony into your presentation today? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any other testimony so, uh, based upon any other element of this application? Not this time. Well, this is your time, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we appreciate okay. having the hearing and uh, Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank I have you. no other questions. Thank you. All right. Uh, Ms. Ford, anything else? No, ma'am, not at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, I will uh, go ahead and enter an order approving the deviation. Um, as I frequently say, time is money. I will try to get it out as quickly as possible so you folks can uh, 
can get to work and help these folks. So thank you for coming in today. Thank you. That concludes this hearing. Moving on to the next hearing. Madam Clerk, thank you. Case number RZN 24-000001, address 3307 Northeast 16th Avenue, applicant BJM Consulting. The ordinance is a privately initiated rezone from single family residential R1 to commercial C for four parcels in Northeastern Cape Coral. Properties are at 3303 3307 Northeast 16th Avenue and 3302-3306 Avril Boulevard. The site was amended into commercial professional via ordinance 6-24. The impact if adopted would be to remove the potential development of four residences and to increase the city's commercial land by 1.23 acres and would bring the zoning into compliance with the future land use. Any persons giving testimony today, if you are able, please stand and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Good morning, Mr. Daltrey. Good morning, Madam Hearing Examiner. For the record, Wyatt Daltrey playing team coordinator with the city's planning division. I'd like to take the opportunity now uh, to inform you that proper notice was given for this case uh, as in accordance with city requirements. We provide notice through um, 500 uh, mailings to residents with, uh, and property owners within 500 feet of the subject property, a posting the sign on the property, and finally, uh, prov uh, provision of notice within the newspaper of record, the Fort Myers News Press. Thank you. I will find the proper notice was given. Right. And I commend you. you for your work with FEMA, by the way. I know oh. that staff and you have been working incredibly hard, so thank you. Do thank you me. wish to be recognized as an expert in this matter? Uh, I do, please. All right. Can you tell me why? <laughs> Certainly. Uh, I've been a practicing planner uh, for the last 22 plus years, uh, employed with the city of Cape Coral. I am a certified planner, a member of the uh, American Institute of Certified Planners. Uh, my focuses have been primarily in long range planning, comprehensive, uh, comprehensive planning, uh, mainly land use planning, uh, some economic development, but mainly in those, those fields. And then lately the last decade or so in floodplain management. And also you were uh, responsible for assisting with the uh, re, uh, redoing of all of the maps and planning for the city of Cape Coral a couple years ago. Correct. As far as, yes, the mass rezone that we had performed uh, in, in a coordination with the establishment of the land development code and multiple uh, evaluation and appraisal review uh, cycles of the comprehensive plan. I will find you as an expert based upon your testimony, your CV, and your other qualifications. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Good morning, Mr. Mazurkowitz. Morning, Madam Hearing Examiner Joe Mazurk was president of BJ Consultant here on behalf of the owners uh, of this property. Uh, Madam Hearing Examiner, based on uh, previous uh, presentations at, at this venue and my previously submitted CV, I would request to be recognized as an expert witness. I will recognize you as an expert witness for purposes of this hearing based upon your CV, which has been previously pr uh, provided to, uh, to staff and myself and also based upon your testimony regarding matters that are similar to this issue, the issues today and other, and other hearings on other days. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Hearing Examiner. Today, uh, we are looking at a rezoning of a property that's located at 3303-3307 Northeast 16th Avenue and 3302 and 3306 Averill Boulevard. Uh, the site is presently made up of four parcels, all under the same ownership. Once the rezoning is complete, all four parcels will be combined into one parcel. And this is our uh, request to change it from residential to commercial zoning. The site fronts on Averill Boulevard is approximately 1.23 acres. Future land use was recently changed to CP, commercial professional, and the existing zoning is R1 residential. The site is uh, just, over, just under 53,600 square foot with 215 foot of frontage and 250 foot of depth, and is currently in the city reserve area, not serviced by any utilities. We are requesting rezoning of the entire site from R1 single family to C commercial. The parcel is at the northern end of the block 5614 with the CA Cape Coral owning the rest of the block to the south for a future fire station. Currently block 5614 has three land uses, the CP commercial professional for this site, the SM single family for the parcel directly to the south of us in between us and the city uh, 
parcel that's for a public facilities. We have been in communication with the city and um, if the city doesn't use the, the northern end of their parcel, we would buy it or share it for retention area as we both develop if the city wants it for their retention for their fire station. So either way, that'll never be used as single family homes. The remaining, of the, uh, the, the, the remaining of the block, as I said earlier, is all city property. The subject parcel is surrounded on all four sides by single family and R1 zoning. Location of the parcel fronting on four, a four lane divided road and two other local streets, Northeast 33rd Terrace and Northeast 16th Avenue, by also being adjacent to the city's future fire station, makes this site a prime location for a future commercial development, specifically some sort of neighborhood commercial to service the surrounding areas. The proposed zoning is consistent with the goals, policies, and future land use designations of the city's comprehensive plan because this application addresses the shortfall of commercial parcels in the city and especially in the Northwest Gator Circle area. It is located on, on a four lane divided street and has access to other local streets and is greater than the one acre size and has the ability to increase the size once the city determines if they might want to surplus their adjacent property to the south of the subject parcel. In reviewing the application, with the required review criteria, we submit the following. The proposed C commercial zoning is consistent with the property's uh, commercial land use and is larger than one acre with full block depth and with making it a site large enough to develop with buffers from the surrounding single family homes in the area. Many of the uses allowed in the commercial zoning are compatible with the size of this parcel and therefore also compatible with the existing potential uses in the surrounding area. Location of the parcel makes it a great site for a neighborhood center to serve the surrounding residential and will be very compatible with the planned fire station to the south. The requested zoning will serve the community's needs to provide non-residential development in the area where they do not exist presently. The existing zoning, C zoning, would allow, the requested C zoning would allow for development that fits in well with the characteristics of the area and will be a great transition for the public facilities to the south from the rest of the residential in the area. The other proposed zoning district allowed with, within the C commercial professional land use is P professional, which might create fewer impacts on the surrounding areas, but there are also many of the uses allowed in C zoning that have very similar impacts to the surrounding areas. The size of this site is large enough to allow for decent buffering while not being so loud so large, it would allow for a large intensive use that would be not compatible with the neighborhood. Based on the submitted inf information showing the favorable responses to all six review criteria, we respectfully ask for a positive response from the city to this rezoning request. Uh, we have reviewed staff report and we would like to make it part of our presentation this morning. Thank you, I have no questions. Can we have staff up please, thank you. Mr. Daltrey again, thank you. Good morning again, Madam Hearing Examiner. <clears throat> uh, I would like to second um, most of the comments already provided by the applicant as it pertains to this case. I'll just follow up with uh, some, some uh, segments of my case report for purposes of this analysis. Uh, as we mentioned, the, this uh, property is located in northeastern Cape Coral, uh, just west of Averill Boulevard, north of uh, Del Prado, as it makes its northeasterly turn towards US 41. This area uh, does not have much in the way of commercial land, and when we analyzed this during the future land use map amendment process earlier this year, we felt it was appropriate to have to, to set aside some land for commercial professional for the future, and that was really kind of the purpose behind that amendment and, and had a large part to play during the, the adoption of that future land use map amendment request. This is the follow up to that by providing a zoning that's consistent with that land use. Um, the site is quadrilateral, it's nearly a, it's nearly a square, uh, four parcels, eight lots total, uh, just a, uh, at 53,000 square feet makes it about 1.2 acres in size. Um, I'm going to focus primarily on our 
analysis found in land development section 3.4.6, which are the six criteria that we analyze for purposes of rezones. The first question of which is whether the proposed zoning district is consistent with the city's comprehensive plan. We find, of course, that the commercial zoning district identified in policy 1.15 is consistent with the commercial professional future land use that's currently present on this property. Uh, the second item is whether the full range of uses allowed in the proposed zoning district will be compatible with those existing uses in the area under consideration. Now the areas, the existing uses in the area under consideration, primarily single family in nature, sporadic development. There's a f proposed fire station to the south but it's not been developed yet. Uh, we find that, um, of course, commercial district allows an array of non-residential uses such as retail, office, and service. Um, majority of these uses we feel should be compatible with the surrounding area. Could be some adverse impacts uh, on single family homes south of the site depending on the future development. Um, impacts such as vehicular trips, noise and light vary between businesses. So it's really dependent on what the end user is. Um, as mentioned earlier, the relatively small site though will preclude, in our opinion, most of the more intense uses that you're going to, that are available in the commercial zoning district. Um, in addition to that, commercial district has landscape buffering standards that can, should, and have in the past assisted in compatibility with residential uses. Uh, the third item is whether the range of uses allowed in the proposed zoning district will be compatible with existing and potential uses in the area under consideration. As mentioned before, surrounding area is residential in nature with a single family, multifamily, future land use classification. In the future, uh, as utilities are provided to the area, city staff will determine whether that SM land use will eventually be single family or multifamily. And sometimes we change those to commercial professional, but assuming that they remain residential, we feel that just as I just mentioned in my prior, uh, just previously in my testimony, that uses permitted in the commercial district should be generally compatible with not just the existing, but the potential uses in the future, particularly once that fire station is in place. Uh, a lot of this is gonna be dependent uh, as far as the time is considered um, on the provision of utilities. Um, this is not a corridor site, I would just like to, to mention that. So again, due to those site limitations imposed by the street network, more intrusive uses that are possible in the commercial zoning district would not be viable for this location. Uh, absent things like assemblage of property, vacation of roadways, which the, the development pattern doesn't look to support that. The property owners don't own other properties in the area that would, that would make one think that that would be a future direction. Uh, item number four, whether the proposed zoning district will serve a community need or broader public purpose. Um, City of Cape Coral has a very well-documented need for uh, commercial development. This rezone, along with a previously adopted future land use map amendment request to commercial professional, will result in development of commercial development when centralized utilities become available to the area. Single-family homes are not an allowed use of the commercial district. Uh, really, no residential uses are permitted in the commercial district. Um, the site is large enough to accommodate what we consider a neighborhood commercial development on the site, something um, offices, maybe a small convenience store, probably not large enough for a gas station. Most gas stations now usually push acre and a half to two acres in size, and that is not the area that we're, lo what we're looking at uh, in this case. Item number five, characteristics of the proposed rezone area are suitable for the uses permitted in the proposed zoning district. Uh, at over one acre in size and with frontage along a collector roadway, uh, we feel that the site is suitable for a range of uses, including office, retail, service. Uh, as I mentioned earlier when I started my testimony, there really isn't any commercial in this area. This is kind of the gateway to what we call the Gator Circle area. Uh, there are no commercial uses uh, present within the Gator Circle area. We find as part of a long range planning effort and this is being performed in other areas in Northern Cape Coral. Staff is looking at areas and performing city initiated land use amendments and follow up rezones at major intersections along Kismet Parkway and Diplomat Parkway and I believe also Tropicana. So this is kind of a precursor to that that just happened to be initiated by a private applicant but it is in line with a city um, initiative 
to get ahead of the curve, identify these commercial lands prior to utilities are being made available. Uh, so that end, the commercial zoning district would allow office retail and service uses, uh, either as permitted uses, special exceptions, or conditional uses, depending on the final development of the site. And then finally, item number six, whether a zoning district other than the district requested will create fewer potential adverse impacts to existing uses in the surrounding area. Within policy 1.15, we identify the professional zoning district as another district that is consistent with a commercial professional future land use. Uh, those, the uses within the professional district are less numerous than those in the commercial. They, as the name would suggest, lean towards more office and service uses as opposed to retail. Given the, the general hours of operation for professional uses, they tend to be um, restricted to daylight hours. You could assume, uh, correctly assume, that there would be fewer adverse impacts with the professional zoning district, but as mentioned prior uh, by the applicant, there's a lot of overlap between those two zoning districts, so it's not uh, a guarantee that there would be fewer adverse impacts if we were to view professional instead of commercial for this site. Um, staff recommends approval of this amendment. Again, this is consistent with our comprehensive plan and policy 1.15. We view this as the follow-up to a process that had uh, been initiated earlier this year with the future land use map amendment. Uh, and I'll stand by for any questions. I do have one question. Um, over the past couple of years, especially since COVID has hit, uh, there's been testimony by various applicants and various staff members that uh, that the office use has fallen into disfavor uh, from an applicant's viewpoint. Do you think that that's uh, still a trend, or do you think it's possible that the trend's going the other way, or is it too soon to tell? It may be. It may still be too soon to tell. I mean, certainly from uh, from an applicant's point of view, the commercial zoning district provides more options, and that right there, I think is more valuable to the applicant, without a doubt. As far as in the post-COVID world, um, it depends where you look. I mean, uh, not to, not to you know, provide an example I've read in the news, but apparently Google's going back to five days a week <laughs> in the office. So uh, they're the, just using that as an example, it looks like the return to work and you know, away from the work from home um, template may be changing. It's only been four years. And I realize it's too soon. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot on that, but oh, thank you. Certainly. Any other testimony? Uh, no more to provide, ma'am. Thank you. This, right. is a, this is a public hearing. Are there members of the public who wish to provide input or testimony? Seeing no members of the public, I'll bring it back to the applicant's representative. Uh, Mr. Mazurkowitz, uh, I would like to ask you that same question, more as a question of a trend than as to a specific I've asked you this before, so you're yeah. not surprised. You're reading my mind because I wrote it down, right? A lack of market for professional use in Cape Coral, specifically in Cape Coral, uh, based on my recent experience with property owners uh, not wanting to uh, or wanting to change commercial, excuse me, professional, either to commercial or to multifamily. Uh, there is, uh, there, because there's just a lack, there is uh, the perfect example is right around here, City Centrum, when we originally did a lot of this area around City Hall, it never, the market never reacted to it. And lo and behold, we have changed most of it back to multifamily. Uh, and some little bit of professional left, and there's a little bit at the uh, intersection of Nicholas and uh, Country Club, but it's not, it's not, not very much. That's, that's my observation as well, but you're the expert in this, not me, so. And I'd also uh, w w like to thank staff for their presentation, and we would like to include it into our record also. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, uh, I'm assuming you have no other comments, Mr. Daltrey, so. No other comments, Madam Chair. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I will recommend that the rezoning go forward as requested, um, and um, as, uh, as you folks have heard me say in the past, I, I will try to get out as quick, get it out as quickly as possible. I know time is money, and uh, and the city needs to uh, continue its economic engine. So, um, I am closing the hearing at this point. Our next hearings are December fifteenth, twenty twenty four, nine a.m. here in Council Chambers. We stand adjourned at nine thirty four. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>